So we are, today we are going to start with uh, simple stuff, some simple notation, some basic examples. Uh, so we will, I will for the most of the initial lectures that I am going to give before the midterm, I am going to largely follow it from the book. Uh, the first book I gave as a reference last time that is uh, Introduction to Probability Models and uh, by random process for uh, engineers. Okay, fine. So, as this we said, this course is about introduction to stochastic models. The book, the first reference I said that says introduction to probability models, right? So, what is the difference? Probability and stochastic, they are the same. So, what we are interested here is so, okay, the book says introduction to probability theory and uh, our course is titled as introduction to stochastic models. Theory is uh, used to analyze models, right, develop models. So, what is this probability theory we are going to develop to study models, right? Many things we are going to face in real life, they need not be certain, right? There is always randomness associated with them. So, is there a way like I systematically model them? First thing is I need to model them. If I can systematically model and then I can analyze and then whatever the analysis I have done, I can tell that analysis to somebody else and that guy will un understand it. If you can, you can talk to him what is the model that you took it. So, fine there will be like if you give me a realistic scenario like Nobody is God, right? Like you can't perfectly model it. So you are going to model it according to some set rules, which we are going to study in this rule. So if you are going to do that, then it is possible for you to explain the model you have developed and what all the analysis you did, and then that guy may not or may agree with your analysis, depending on whether he agrees with your model or not. So broadly we start analyzing or we start to study some basic term terminology that will be useful for us to start talking a stochastic model. That means, yes, I am trying to model a system, there is uncertainty, but I want to still model it. And what is that notion of this stochasticity? We are going to make precise by going through sequence of uh, terminologies now. Okay, so the first thing we are going to study is so I am going to call anything. So, when you are going to model something. Yes, there are a set of possible outcomes possible with that. I am going to denote the collection of set of all those possible outcomes as sample space and uh, I am going to denote it by S. So, whenever I call experiment, it is implied that I mean an random experiment. That is, the outcome itself, you cannot a priori know what is that it is going to take. So, okay, let us now try to distinguish what is a random experiment and what is a deterministic experiment. Can you tell me an, a certain thing in life 
which you are sure shot to know what is the outcome is going to be. Determining shape of earth okay let us say I mean God has built something I mean that nobody can change these are things certain things are fixed right. So, for example, laws of physics they are fixed right like you know that is how it has to behave these are fundamental laws you cannot change. Uh, but now let us say you have a toss of a coin can I consider this as a random experiment. So, the outcome could be head or tail right and uh, And each of uh, head and tail can happen. I mean, uh, I don't know like uh, when the head. I can't apparently when you toss a coin. I don't know whether uh, it's already going to be head or coming to or head or tail. And that's why. So fine. That is possibly the reason why uh, the coin toss used to decide uh, who is going to bat first or uh, which court you are going to choose or uh, who is going to serve first because that is uh, possibly a very random variant and uh, maybe it is uh, not going to bias towards uh, anybody. We will talk about this what I mean by bias, but at least a priori we are not going to be saying okay this guy is going to be favored, this guy is going to get whatever he prefers. So, we are going to do that randomly. So, we are going to denote sample space by omega and uh, depending on what is that random experiment we are talking about this could be a different set. For example, if I am going to talk about coin toss, what is this set is going to be? Two outcomes are just it is going to be head or tail. Right now, let not put them in flower bracket, just let me write this as head or tail. Other uh, you might have already talked about it thousand times like toys, toss of a dice right. When you are going to throw a dice what are the possible outcomes? 1 to 6 that is going to be our sample space. So, this is I am this is a random experiment because if I throw it a priori maybe I do not know. what is the outcome that I am going to see out of this. So, let us say that is. So, when I asked you can you give me an experiments where the outcome is almost deterministic, it is deterministic you have to think right like it something immediately does not come to mind. If I ask you ok give me an random experiments I mean everything that comes to mind is possibly random right. Possibly like there will be a class today eh, it is random I do not know what happens if that lecture gets out uh, he may not come for class or you, you, you may for some reason may not attend the class for whatever various reason that is not under your control. So, many things are random in life and uh, if you want to model them or analyze them. So, we need to have a systematic uh, you have to develop it systematically. So, one concept we are going to use this notion of sample space. So, instead of one coin suppose I am going to take two coins and throw them I mean in each trial I am going to two, toss two coins what could be possible outcomes for me. So, I can see possibly head head on both sides on both coins I am going to see tail tail or first is head other tail or And uh, similarly, if I am going to throw through dice, what is the possible outcome? 36, right? Maybe the better way to represent that is through a matrix where it is uh,
So, these are very toy trivial examples where as soon as I tell what is the experiment, you right away know what is the outcome is going to look like, okay. So, we will leave up to our convenience how we are going to represent it when it is as simple as identity, we will write it like this. When it is uh, more convenient for us to write it in matrix form, we will write it. It is just like collect, so the, each one is an outcome here. So, we are going to say each element in this omega is an outcome. We are going to say So, this as I said are simple things, it is pretty easy to write down, but often I mean you are not going to model what coin toss, right? Like you are learning this course to do much, much more complicated things. For example, you want to model how the weather prediction, you want to model my trajectory of a missile or like my trajectory of a satellite, whatever the things or uh, whatever like if I send a signal whether my signal will reach my uh, destination or if I am going to take a particular route whether I am going to re reach my destination within a stipulated time. Ma many things you want to model. So, in that case we always not worry what is the we, we are not always in uh, sit down and first write okay, what is the possible set of possible outcomes in this. So, for example, if I am interested in let us say find average height of all Indians. So, then what could be out uh, sample space in this? Yes, it is random. I am asking about what are the possible outcomes. Yeah, any value right like maybe the shortest person is let us say from 2 feet. Uh, I do not know if it is uh, or and uh, I mean I am saying about adults let us say some uh, up average age of Indians who are uh, 21 plus and maybe like something like maybe 7 or 8 feet all numbers in these things are possible. So, you are not going to just like maybe write down exhaustively individual value, but maybe write a range or uh, let us say you are trying to model weather forecasting. There I mean millions of millions of parameters will be involved in how the things evolve and uh, based on what is the value of this millions of millions variable different possible outcomes are there. We just do not try to enumerate them, but it will be on our back of our mind like what is the possible outcome is ok. So, whenever it is possible we just enumerate them, but uh, whenever say sometimes I may just say ok this is a sample space, but that sample space may be like abstract we may not we may have its visualization, but we may not write it formally on a paper or on a board ok. Now comes event. So, once we are given a sample space, then we talk about events. What is the event? For example, in your uh, coin toss problem, what are the possible events? The possible event in a single toss of a coin, either it is head or tail. And uh, when uh, it is a cost of two coins, the event could be like both showing up head, both showing up tails or one of them showing up head tail and uh, otherwise ok. And uh, we are just uh, simply going to denote an event by like this and then 
you'll be always interested in the questions like okay what is if i want to do a two coin toss what is the likelihood or probability that you are going to see some value uh, that uh, the outcome is going to the event is going to take one of this possible values so let's say e and f are two events then we say and f are actually disjoint what is this it's a null set what does null set means it does not have any element okay so we are saying what does the interpretation of e intersection f equals to null set means so they don't have any common element so when they don't have any common element we exactly call these two events are mutually disjoint or uh, for sets we call it mutually disjoint but these are uh, events we are going to call them as mutually exclusive so similarly let's say we are going to have p1 p2 like en like let's say these are collection of events they are all coming from a same sample space we can talk about their unions we can talk about their intersections and we can take about any combinatorial structure that is they union of some along with intersection with others and all for example if you want to let's say i want to take union so here let me i equals to okay. so what is this so i am just taking union of all the sets now suppose let's say e1 is H H and E two is H T. What is the union of E one and E two? So union of H one and H two says what? The first outcome is head. That's right. Like you don't care about second. Second can be either head or tail, but you want the first outcome to be head. So in that case, okay, these E one E two. could be some events in your space but you can combine them to derive uh, more 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 events okay and similarly you can look at intersections so i could write it as the intersection so what does intersection of set of events give you the common element so in the same example this hh and uh, ht the intersection will be what so okay so notice that when i said e is a subset of omega right uh, one element can also be a subset right so here these are the individual elements in the set omega for example e1 could be this element and this element and e1 could be 
or it could be these three elements. Okay. So now when you are going to take intersection of let us say just two element in this there is nothing common between them right. But suppose you are going to define E1 to be this set and E2 to be this set you can do that right like you can take this because both are subsets of my, my omega what is that intersection is going to give you it requires that both tosses give me tails. Okay, now we will get to the notion of probability okay, and probability of events. So, we will make the notion of probably precise more, but let us try to write down informally what we mean by probability of uh, events. Okay. So, you take an, uh, so, so hence more when I say an experiment, a random experiment that will always come with an associated sample space. So, when I say random, it is going to take all possible, uh, some possible outcomes, I am going to call that a sample space. And now on that space, I have an associated event space and I am going to say this probability is something that is going to assign a numbers to this event such that. Yeah, need to be proper subset? Yeah, not necessarily it could be full uh, event space. So, I mean when I use the notation subset uh, it not necessarily it is a strict subset it, it could be entire set itself. Okay? I mean I may if, uh, if I want to specifically say that it is a proper subset then I am going to use this notation that means equality is not included. Okay? Otherwise, if I just write it, it will be just like this.
yeah it says that this function p is p is basically a function right it tells what is the value assigned to each possible event in omega it says that for every event we will take a value which is between 0 1 and and the entire sample space it is going to give a value of 1 and if you are going to take a sequence of mutually exclusive event the probability of their union is nothing but sum of their probability. So, all of you understand what I mean by a sequence. So, you all might have heard about sequence of numbers right sequence of real numbers like x1, x2 where x1 is a real number for example, xn can be let us say 1 by n. So, what is xn converges to? If I set xn equals to 1 by n, but now I am talking about sequence of events, right? What do I mean by sequence of events? It is just like indexing, like I have set. So, what I mean by sequence means I have an indexed set of values, right? Like you give me an any integer, uh, I mean a natural number that index is associated with some number. So, if I tell me i x i is the corresponding number if you tell me n x n is the corresponding the same notion we are going to use for the sets like this for every possible index there is an associated set if you have such thing if you have such a sequence of this it is it is going to be just this ok. Now, And uh, we are going to refer to p of e for any p of e we are going to just say is the probability of event p. ok. Now, let us see some of the things associated with this probability. Uh, let us say we can come up with uh, some such probability function. Suppose that let us go back to our uh, basic coin tossing problem. So, we have omega which consists of heads and tail, event can be either head or tail. So, let us say for uh, if I say it is a fair coin, what is that p of h you want to assign 1 by 2 right like both are equally likely. If let us say it is a biased coin then let us say somebody has tweaked the coin and uh, probably likelihood of h is more than tail then uh, maybe you want to assign probability of h to be something greater than 0 0.5. And now if I go to dice problem what is if I say it is a fair die what is the probability you are going to assign to any number just 1 by 6 all of them are equally likely and uh, if again but that is not the necessary right. If you feel that you, you design such thing uh, such that it could be biased. So, you may if you make uh, some face heavy so that it comes more likely if the design is like that uh, you are going to uh, assign uh, one, more than 1 by 6 for that. And also note that this probability requires that p of s is equals to 1 that is it is all possibilities right you are going to say ok I am doing this event and these are the possible outcomes. When you do this experiment one of the things that has to happen right otherwise your definition of outcomes sample space was incorrect ok fine. You can it is up to you like you can define based on your model how want to you want to decide this p. So, you would like like if, if you want to model a fair a fair coin you would like this p to be half for both the events and the same thing if you want to model a fair dice you want to set p of i to be 1 by 6 for all i 1 to 6. But that is not necessary right this is up to you this is your your function that you want to use it as whenever you want to 
model. Okay, fine. Suppose let's say I have I say a fair coin and uh, you keep tossing it, keep on tossing it and uh, after large number of toys you count how many heads you got and how many tails you got and divide it by number of tosses you made. What do you expect that to be? So, if it is a fair coin, you expect that to be close to 0.5, right? So, in a way, you want to kind of interpret this probability as frequency of occurrence of that event when you do this experiment again and again, okay? So, let us try to, we will get back to this again, okay, fine. Now, Suppose let us say E and F are two events. And I am interested in finding probability of E plus probability of F. Okay. I am not saying that this E and F are disjoint, okay, they could have some common elements. If that is the case, what is the sum you are going to be like? So, one natural way to do this is either take probability, so take it like probability of U F. You want to do correction for this? And uh, that is going to be, and why is this correction here? They are not mutually exclusive, right? Like suppose if you have a set A and another set B, this set is entire this and this is B. If you are going to take this entire set once and you take this entire set once, you would have added this region twice. Added, yeah. Added of right, right. Okay. So right. So I mean, just by this uh, Venn diagram geometric interpretation, you will see that fine. When I did this, I counted the common part once, so I need to do it again because that has actually been added twice on the left hand side. Again, this relation is fine, it makes intuitive sense, right? The probability should be such that it should satisfy these conditions. So, now we have introduced this basic notion of what is sample space, what is event and uh, we have introduced this notion of uh, this probability and it we want this probability should be such that it, it satisfies some intuitive properties. Okay, fine. Instead of going, okay, I want this probability to satisfy something, what we will now try to do is start with some basic assumptions on my probability space or my event space and define probability in a systematic way so that whatever the kind of things we want, they actually naturally follow by our basic definition. Instead of okay, we want this to happen, you start with your basic framework such that they are induced to happen. Okay. 